Hello everybody. Recently I've been installing a lot of rolling release Linux distributions. Uh, recently I have reviewed Manjaro, Antergos, and Sabion Linux. Manjaro and Antergos are both Arch based Linux distros. Sebion is a Gentoo based Linux distribution. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Seduction, which is a Debian based Linux distribution. Uh, it is based off of SID. SID is Debian's unstable branch. It is Debian's rolling release branch. So not a lot of people live in Debian Unstable. There, you know, there's not a ton of people that use Debian Unstable as their daily desktop driver. Uh, unlike Arch and Gentoo, where, you know, in Arch or Gentoo, if you're an Arch or Gentoo user, you're on the rolling release model of Arch and Gentoo. There is no other model. Uh, every single Arch and Gentoo user, they're all in. They're all on the rolling release model. Completely different with Debian, you know, uh, a very small percentage of Debian users actually use the unstable branch. Debian is well known for their stable branch. That is how Debian made its name. You want the most reliable, uh, most rock solid, most stable Linux distribution out there. You run Debian stable. That's that's just what you do. But today we're going in a little different direction. I'm installing Seduction 17.1 I'm in specific I'm going to install Seduction 17.1.0 their LXQT edition. I've already downloaded the ISO so I'm going to be installing it inside a virtual machine so let's get started. Okay so loaded the ISO inside VirtualBox and here is the initial uh, screen here. Looks like we have settings for time, time zone, key table, language. We can go ahead and boot uh, into the live environment. We have options further down the list for memtest and of course to reboot the system. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and boot into the live environment. Uh, VirtualBox wants to capture my keyboard and mouse. see how long it takes to boot into the live environment here. It should give us the LXQT desktop which is kind of a lightweight uh, desktop environment and it does. It actually booted pretty quickly considering that it's inside a virtual machine and we haven't actually installed it. This is just running off the ISO. Okay, I click this uh, Calamaris I guess that's how you pronounce the program here. This program is actually the installer for Seduction. So I'm going to run through the install. Let's see how, how this goes. All right. Initially, we have language set up. It has correctly picked English United States for me. So I just click Next. Release notes. If I want to read the release notes, I'm not going to bother on this video. Chicago and America as the time zone. I am in the central time zone here in the US, so that's great. A lot of distros, for some reason, failed to uh, guess the correct time zone, but good job, Seduction. Keyboard. It has correctly chosen English US for the keyboard. You have a, a field to test things out if you want to choose to do that. Looks like everything is all right. Partitioning. Uh, we have the choice of erasing the disk and giving Seduction the entire hard drive or partitioning the hard drive, manually partitioning it. Uh, this is a virtual machine. I won't be dual booting alongside anything obviously in this virtual machine so I'm going to choose the erase disk option and it is going to give Seduction the entire 15 gigabyte hard drive in this virtual machine. We're going to create an extended 4 partition. Alright, moving on. What is my name? 
for simplicity, I'm just going to use Seduction as my name. Seduction is going to be my username. Seduction-PC is going to be the name of the computer. We have to give a password. I'm going to give it a pretty simple password. Now we have the option of logging in automatically without asking for a password. On a real machine, I would never suggest you do that. It takes one second to type in your password. Uh, for security reasons, always require your machine to ask you for a password to log you in. We also have the option of using the same password as our user for also the administrator account. I'm going to go ahead and choose to do so just for time. All right, the review screen here. Reviewing what we've already set, location, America, Chicago for time zone, keyboard. Yeah, partitioning. Yeah, looks right. I'm going to click next. All right, it is warning me. Install now. I will not be able to undo these changes once I click install now. Basically, this is a warning. It's about to format your hard drive and start writing to it. So if I already had something installed on this machine, now this is a virtual machine, so no big deal here, but there's no coming back from this, people, so install now. And here we go with the install process. I'm going to pause the video. Usually these installers take a few minutes. Okay, the installation has completed. Uh, that only took about seven or eight minutes to run through that so come to this screen uh, this installer is similar to that uh, Manjaro installer I had used before uh, it was laid out almost exactly the same and it has the same problem or the same criticism uh, that the Manjaro installer had I, I love it uh, other than this screen here when you're all done you have to reboot a system right after you install it so why is this restart now in such small font kind of out of the way most people are going to end up naturally navigating over here and hitting quit. When you do that, you're still in this LXQT live environment on the ISO. You're not in your freshly installed, uh, in this case, seduction. Uh, so this needs to be more prominently displayed, and it probably needs to be just ticked on by default. So I'm going to reboot my machine now, and let's go ahead and boot up our freshly installed seduction. Okay, I have rebooted our machine. And let's see what our newly installed Seduction Linux, the LXQT edition, looks like. We're at the Login Manager. I chose Seduction for my username. And then give it my password. All right, and you know the LXQT desktop environment loaded up very fast, uh, especially being inside a virtual machine. That was as soon as I hit my password and hit enter, you know, a second, certainly no more than two seconds passed, and the full LXQT desktop environment loaded up. So that is pretty awesome. Uh, I'm, I was impressed with the installer, and I now let's uh, let's check out the LXQT desktop environment because. Honestly, I haven't played around with LXQT much. It's, it's kind of new. It is kind of the uh, new version of LXDE. It's a, basically a, a combination of the old LXDE desktop and the old Razer QT desktop. They merged and created LXQT. So let's look around a little bit. So I think to start, let's see what is installed by default inside Seduction LXQT. I'm going to go to the menu here at the bottom of the screen. And under accessories, we have a character map program. We have Juff Ed text editor. I've actually never heard of that text editor. I'm assuming it, it's going to be some lightweight text editor. Uh, the whole point of having a desktop environment like LXQT, which is supposed to be lightweight and very fast, uh, you don't want to install a bunch of heavy programs on the system if you're going to you know, run a minimal lightweight desktop. You also want minimal lightweight applications. So I don't know Jeff Ed, but looks like your standard text editor. 
also under accessories we have the Midnight Commander Editor, PC FM File Manager, which is a great file manager, very lightweight but fully functional file manager. I use it a lot when I install OpenBox or Fluxbox or any lightweight uh, desktop or window manager. So PC Man FM is a great file manager. Plank, which is the dock at the top of the screen here. It's also a very lightweight dock, great dock. We have Clipper, Vim, which is a uh, uh, InCurse's uh, text editor. Uh, I'm actually going to do a series of videos covering Vim. It's, it's kind of for advanced users, though, not something your average Linux user is going to play around in much. We have our X archiver, which I'm sure is the zip, unzip utility. Then we have the uh, Zim desktop wiki. I'm actually not sure what that is. Mm. Yeah, I'm assuming this app you know, is kind of like a note-taking app or something because it's got a folder here, notebooks, and then slash notes. Uh, anyway, I'm going to continue on through the programs here. Under games, you have 2048-QT. Uh, that's a number game. Okay. Under graphics, we have Image Magic installed, LX Image, Nomax, Screen Grab. We have a screenshot utility and we have Xsane, which is a scanning program, I believe. Yeah. You know, all of these programs here are really lightweight, you know, graphics programs. You don't see anything heavy in here like GIMP or Inkscape or anything like that. Again, the whole point of running a desktop like LXQT is to keep things light and minimal. Under Internet, we have Cine. I'm not sure what Cine is. Let me launch it and see what happens. And it's asking for a root password. You know what, I'm not going to bother with that. So, If it's something that's requiring a root password, it sounds like it's a pretty serious situation. We have Conman UI set up, which is a QT GUI front end for Conman. We have Firefox, our web browser. I love Firefox. We have HexChat. We have an IRC client. Let's see which one. HexChat the IRC client, so I don't know why it appears twice in the list, but let me quit out of that. Qubit Torrent. We have some SSH uh, software. We have something called Trojita. I'm not sure what Trojita is. Oh, it's an email client, so I'm assuming it's a lightweight email client. And we have our XDG browser launcher. I'm guessing this is a good way to search and browse the programs that are installed on our system. Under Office, we have our email client again, Trojita. We also have QPDF View, which I'm guessing is some kind of document viewer. So we don't have any kind of like LibreOffice Suite or anything heavy like that. Of, of course, if you want to install such programs, you can. But to keep things kind of light and minimal, they didn't install, you know, such a big heavy package like the full LibreOffice Suite. Understandable. Sound and video. We have Audacious, which is great. MPV, uh, the media player. Audacious, by the way, is the music player. We have Pulse Audio Controls. We have SM player. We have Foco screen. I'm not sure what that is. A screencaster. Okay. Then we have a YouTube browser. Okay, that's kind of cool. Then we have our system tools. You know the standard stuff. The decomp editor, H top. You have Midnight Commander again. You have our root terminal. We have a couple of different terminal emulators also listed here. Preferences. This is you know where you can you know play around with you know, settings and stuff for your desktop, and window manager, etc. So you have appearance, brightness, date time, desktop, power settings, user and groups, window manager tweaks, etc. Also under preferences you have things like Gparted, which is a ma uh, managing your partitions. Not something you really want to play around with unless you know what you're doing. 
So I have printer settings, pulse audio preferences, screen saver, sysadmin, about LXQT. Yeah, let's click this tab because I really, like I said, I haven't played around with LXQT much. It's kind of a, it's kind of a new project. So about advanced, easy to use, and fast desktop environment based on QT technologies. Technologies. LXQT would not have been possible without the Razor dash QT project and its many contributors. So again, it's a continuation of the Razor QT project of before. And then when we have tabs for authors, thank yous, translations, and technical info. So just a, a little overview about LXQT. Again, the desktop looks pretty, pretty minimal. You have this simple lightweight dock at the top called Plank with a few programs already added to the dock. At the bottom we have our taskbar. We have one and two. I'm guessing these are virtual desktops. We can switch between uh, desktops here. I'll open up um, a terminal for demonstration, but desktop one, then click desktop two, and we're on desktop two. Back to desktop one. So, all in all, what are my initial first look impressions, having never used Seduction before, having never installed it before, uh, I give it an A+. Plus. The install went exactly as you would want an install to go. Simple and fast. Uh, the actual installed Seduction here that we're in, yeah, super fast boot up time. Uh, the desktop environment seems to be working as expected. Uh, not having played around in it much, uh, yeah, I'm very happy with it. I'm actually looking forward to playing around in Seduction, where and some of the recent rolling release distros that I installed, even though I am going to play around in them and keep them up to date and give updated videos, I am less enthused, uh, at least about one of them. Uh, if you saw one of my recent videos, you'll, you'll know which one I'm less enthused about out of this group. But Seduction, yeah, um, I'm digging it. So I'm looking forward to this one. So peace, guys.